look at the bench rotation. Kada first off the bench. Where's Luke? Bone. Bone. Where's Luke? I don't know. <laughs> Luke's a DNPCD in in a preseason game. And yes, maybe there's a reason behind it. Maybe he was never expected to play, and that's fine. But Kada not only played ahead of him, played big minutes and played well and played with the starters too. Because because there's no Horford tonight, Kada had to come in as the first big off the bench. Uh, which was interesting, in the and that quarter, might happen. Yeah, yeah. That might happen on back to backs, right? Um, yeah. Where Al sits, you're going to have to. And we were like, okay, on those nights, Cornet's minutes are going to have to get up. Maybe it's Kata's minutes that are going to go up. No, what I'm thinking you, that too. What, that if, great. what if anything do you read into this and or the play of Kata so far? Because he is everybody's darling. These guys tend to sometimes fizzle. You get that big look. Yeah. Kevin arc, Jelly, a year Kevin ago. Jelly, you know. <laughs> Kevin Jelly. <laughs> Cal, Calvin Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Kelly, Calvin Jelly. This might be different though, guys. I don't know, man. Like he, yeah. he's sort of he just fits that criteria of the bruiser slash uh the, the cleanup guy. You know what I mean? He's he's a he can get the putbacks, he's not afraid to throw down. I, I think this is an opportunity to show more of that if you if you ask me, right? If you're Joe Mazzula, well, how does this look with the other guys, with the starters, with you know, being one of the first bigs off the yeah. bench? How does he handle that? And it's a great opportunity against a team like the Hornets. I, I, I'm, I've been impressed, honestly. I, I think something's going. We've been saying that all summer that they could use someone like that, right? That bruiser that can, uh, you know, defend down low, pick up a bunch of fouls. You know, he's not going to play any more than 10, 12 minutes if that. You know what I mean? So I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think it's a, it's a great alternative. It's a great, <laughs> uh, great weapon for Joe Mazzulla to have on nights when, when, when Al's out. Yeah. Hey, do you want to give your hot take, Joe Slay? What? Oh, you want me to? You want me to say it? What, what, what do you? I want to hear what you say first, and I'll say it. Okay, so I love Kada, brilliant player in the G League last year, top five in the MVP race. I, I'm still stunned they got him. It was an amazing pickup. I don't know why the Kings just dumped him to sign Javale McGee. I think it was a pretty bad move, but he hasn't played much at the NBA level yet. So you're still waiting. You know, tonight's a little cr- closer and. He was brilliant, obviously. The pick-and-roll game he showed with Tatum there late in the second was awesome. Awesome rebounder. He he made one of the craziest offensive rebounds I've ever seen. Like, like starter stepping along the baseline and firing out to the corner, and it, Banton ended up losing it, but it was just an awesome play. I, I think he even got credit for it, and then it was a turnover. But uh, he he's, he brings some good energy to the position size as Joe Sway said seven foot two fifty he moves well when I saw him in New York where it was the first time he played in that back to back the way he could get out on the perimeter surprised me a little bit he might have more uh, defensive potential than just dropping back not the best rim protector I know he's no Porzingis out there but this is a great <laughs> find yeah. You have this guy in a two-way, John, and you don't even, like, I know everyone in the chat's going to be like, sign him, but uh, you can use him for, like, 40, 50 games as a two-way guy and not pay him a cent to your cap. So it's an incredible find. They're going to utilize him. You know, I was checking around on if this race is for real because obviously he's played well. And, you know, what I've heard is that Cornette's still the front runner here. He's still viewed as that backup. But rather than Cater being a guy who's going to, ship right up to Maine when their season starts. He might be a guy who's hanging around and actually in the mix to play some here, you know, depending on matchups or whatever else might be. Cornette's not going anywhere, though. Still a guy they really trust. Still a guy they really like. Defensively, I think he's in all the right spots. Joe's they, praised him. Substitute the word they with I and then continue. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I think he's on the bubble, Bobby. All right, go ahead. Say it. He's on, I think he's on the bubble. I, I think when you look at the, the way this team wants to defend, its identity, some of that grit, that toughness, the things that I just Steve. described, I, I'm not quite sure if, uh, if, if Cornette can, can provide that on a night-to-night basis. Even on nights with, second nights of back-to-backs when Al's not playing. You know, uh, the, the, the way they've been defending at a high level, triggering the fast break and uh, getting back, uh, cleaning up the glass, I, I, I don't know. I think this is the better option. I think this would be – this wouldn't shock me if the Celtics decide to cut ties and, and like for reasons that you just mentioned, you know, money reasons to, to, to pull back a little bit there. You got someone that can sort of give you something else that, that you don't get out of, you don't get from Cornette. You don't see from Cornette on a consistent basis. This team has shifted heavily into re 
re what do you call it? They're trying to bring almost bring back that defensive identity that they were with the Ime uh, Udoka team, but it's a little different, right, guys? They have they have other weapons now. They have three point shooters that they didn't have. They have a seven three. Uh, unicorn in the middle and Chris Das Porzingis and then you you fit someone like this coming off the bench I mean look it just it would make it makes a lot of sense uh, again I, it wouldn't shock me if they cut ties with Cornet. you know I don't think it's something that they have to do or that they absolutely you know it would be dumb if they didn't but it wouldn't shock me if they did yeah I mean we're just how are we selling on Cornet? After a few shaky games in the preseason. It's not shaky, Bobby. It's ultimately, you know, when you're a person who is, and again, I'm trying to do this without, like, it sounding like, like, I'm not trying to be insulting, but like. I, I know is, exactly what you mean, John. I remember, Bobby, before we recorded or after the fact, I think it was, I was like, look, I'm not trying to like, like what I think what you're trying to say is that you're not trying to file call Cornette soft, right? I don't want to say that, but I just think it's just, it's another, it's, it's another type of player. Like, it's not, let's be serious. Like, Cornette doesn't have a stranglehold on an NBA roster spot anywhere, okay? Yeah. He's not a lock. He's a guy who was out of the league two years ago, and he was resurrected because the Celtics had, like, nine guys they could suit up, you know, and they had to bring him back in there. So, like, he's a very, very, very fringy player to begin with. He's not an automatic rotation guy. He's not locked into your 8-9 spot. He's not locked into minutes on... He's a break glass in case of emergency, and I'm seven feet tall all day sort of guy. But that's it. If he gets slightly outplayed by anybody, of course he can get removed. You're not losing anything there. He exists because you didn't have anything better, and that's where he would exist on most rosters. And I'm this is not meant to be an insult. Those guys have jobs for a reason. There are guys who stick on rosters because of you know a particular skill. In his case, his skill is height. You know, and it's and I'm not saying this in a disparaging way, but that's what he's got going for him. But if you're bringing in somebody else who can do what he does and give you a little bit more juice, of course he's at risk here. He's not a lock by any means, nor is it insulting to say that he could lose his spot. Like, that's just where he's at. Right. That's who he is. That's his reality. I think like, with all due respect, I'm not I'm not going at you on it either i'm really not we tease you about the cornet stuff i really do believe you have him but it like, was the same you I, I think in your mind he's about 20 percent better than we <laughs> than the rest of us think he is that's yeah, about you it like, you got him as like a borderline everyday player well but, we uh, had the same you have him as a guy a who you think should roster. be getting eight to ten minutes every night and we're like nah yeah you know you, you, when you absolutely need it you know that's it that's well, kind of our, that's where we differ on it we we had the same conversation going in the last year. It's like, really, are they going to rely on him for secondary minutes here? And when Rob was out for that huge stretch to start the season, he hurt his ankle early, but when he comes back, we were pleasantly surprised by how well he played. He gave them good secondary minutes <laughs> against most teams. Now, he's matchup dependent, right? He can't get out on the perimeter. It's the cornet contest, which we've determined hasn't worked here. <laughs> so... There's going to be matchups where you can't play him and you're going to have to go to some other stuff, whether it's small ball or cater or whatever it is. But against the teams that you can clog up the middle with with him, he's done a great job. I mean, I said it the other day, John, or last week. They went into a game against Joel Embiid with no Horford, no Rob last year, and started Blake and played Luke heavy minutes against Embiid, the league MVP, and they won. And it's because he gives them solid minutes out there. He's not grabbing 15 rebounds. And he's I know, but Bobby, what you're, su what you're suggesting is you're basically kind of borderline suggesting that Cornette is irreplaceable. And like, and of, of course he could be replaced and not, and, and it's not that difficult to do so. That's kind of the point is yeah, but you don't have to, you, you, you don't have to, it's not a very tall hurdle to, to get past, to be able to get, beyond Cornette on the depth chart that's the that's kind of what we're saying yeah. <laughs> next day that we're having a uh, luke Cornette uh, <laughs> intervention with bobby <laughs> <laughs> i just can't wait for his first big regular season game this year to go there you go remember the suns game john what do you have 14 no points, i don't seven seven, <laughs> going down going down reverse dunks he's like he's like john he had a double double how do you forget come on <laughs> We're all going to remember where we were <laughs> when Luke hey, Burnett. Everyone still remembers that Horford game, by the way, that I said that. But The Philly uh, one, I'll give you that. But I don't know. 
I mean, he, listen. He had a rock solid year last year. You, you got to, but you also got to remember too, Bobby. Like this team is a lot more. There's, there's new voices on that bench, right? Whole new coaching staff. A lot of people <laughs> who've been around the league for a you know, long time. That's a fair point. I'm not saying that you know the second Sam Cassell walked in there was just like, yo, you guys really want to keep this guy. I'm not saying that, <laughs> but after a training camp, after preseason, like everyone voicing their opinion, it wouldn't find this guy. It go this route if they say, look, let's just. You know, let's let's, let's just try to uh, make a put together a, a much more intimidating second unit with new faces. You know, guys who aren't gonna are gonna cost us less money. We can start trimming. You know, some of this payroll now before the second apron hits. And, and, and Cornette just might be one of those guys that's, that just gets sacrificed. I can't say he. Wendy and Greg Gabriel would have to pass him to make him not be on this roster. They're gonna keep him at a million or two million bucks, whatever it is. It's just who's gonna back up the you know, 10 to 12 minutes that we've talked about here behind Horford, behind Porzingis. And, you know, this brings us to the starting lineup conversation, John, because if they only start Porzingis on most nights, they won't need either of these guys to play. Uh, It's if they go double big, which I still suspect they're thinking about here that they'll actually need 10 to 12 minutes of one of these guys. How can you be on so many islands at once? That's what I ask you. Like <laughs> Cornette Island and Double Big Island, you know, like just <laughs> reside in on one island. Pick one island. Hey, I, I gotta I gotta bring the takes here. That's what people are tuning in for. I, I absolutely do. Bo- Bobby wants to like just preserve those <laughs> eight, nine, ten minutes for Luke. You know, like and he can do that. That's the thing. I'm not if if Horford has to miss time here, or Porzingis goes down for two weeks. You're in a situation, neither of these guys are cutting it if that's what happens. I I don't think you can play these guys 20 minutes, 30 minutes a game. So you're going to have to find someone in that situation. And it might be inevitable that they have to do that anyway. But for the 8, 10 minutes when everyone's healthy and during a regular season game, I think Cornette's perfectly suited to do that. And I'm not knocking Kata. I like him a lot too. I like what he's bringing to the table here. I think he's a good prospect to push forward into the future. You know, we always talk about the double draft, John. Having him here is a guy that Sacramento developed a little bit, and now you can take advantage of. Is great, and he looks phenomenal so far. So, I think there's room for both of these guys. Yeah, that's here's the thing: is why can't why like why not us? You, you know what I mean? Is like you know you see Struess, you see guys undrafted free agents, second look round at band picks, now. You know, hit, and you're like, oh. Look at that. Yeah. They got one. Like and and like well, why did the Celtics let that guy go? And why don't the Celtics get a guy where we can say why did they let that guy go? Maybe they have one. You know, like I think in most cases you're used to we're preconditioned to not believe the hype. Like again, the the, the Kevin Kevin Jelly uh, hype. Like you see a little flash and you're like that's kind of exciting he can jump, you know, like maybe they can use him and then you get in the regular <laughs> season and he doesn't play for the first no, Vonley was playing big minutes to yeah, start last year. Jimmy's darling, Noah Vonley. And like, you know, and after after 10, 12 games, you're like, yeah, no, this it this was gone. Boring. But yeah. like, what if he oh, is something? Like, what if you what if you have something? Like, let, let's take let's take it one step further. <laughs> that I'll remember. I'll never forget that. Why can't we like imagine a world in which not only he makes it over Cornette or plays over Cornette, but actually is a valuable piece? Like why don't we take it one step further and say, like, what if what if they found something real? That would be amazing. <laughs>